this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Righteousness is about our relationship with the Lord, but morality is about our relationship with other people. Okay? That's, that's very simple. However, you can't have a right relationship with other people without a right relationship with God. That's right. That's right. It is absolutely right. And this is what the world doesn't understand. Our relationship with the Lord, righteousness, supports our relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. If we remove that vertical, that relationship with God, then the horizontal, our relationship with other people, that's morality, we'll will fail. fall to the ground and crash. Will fail. Absolutely it will. You know, a good analogy, I mean, is picture in your mind a minute, a cross. Mm -hmm. The cross. How about that? Yes. The cross. With that vertical piece firmly planted in the ground. On the rock. Okay? Well, that represents your relationship, man and God. From here on earth to up in the sky, up to heaven, right? Jesus is the one who made that relationship available. Absolutely. And then you have the cross member, the relationship between man and man. If you take away that upright piece, the vertical, the relationship with God, what happens to the horizontal? It collapses to the ground. It falls to the ground and crashes. So you have a choice. I mean, you're going to either accept God's determination of what is righteous and moral behavior or the world's. The community standards, what the people think, right? Both of those have predetermined paths to achievement. Yes. Okay? Righteousness. There's only one path to righteousness. Only one. Only one. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father mm -hmm. but through me. John 14, 6. There is no other way. I have heard all too many Christians in recent years say, well, if a person's a Hindu, but he's a really good Hindu, he's, no. It's not, no. It's not according to your works. If a person is a Buddhist, but he's a really, really good Buddhist, mm -mm. no. There is only one path to the Father, and that path is Jesus Christ. Right. Now, having said that, I want to tell you this. God says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yes, he is. If some Buddhist wanders up a mountain looking for the guru and he is seeking God, he is very likely to run smack dab into Jesus Christ on the top of that mountain. If his heart's desire is Be to know God. Because God searches a heart and he right. is a rewarder of those who seek him. But if you seek what's to be had in those religions, it doesn't work. Don't fail you. Do not be fooled. Now, morality is purely conforming to an accepted standard of behavior. Mm -hmm. That's what morality is. Okay? It's acceptable to do this. In the issue of morality, then, the question becomes, who determines the standard? Okay? Who determines what is right morality? There's only three choices. It can only be one of three things. Mm -hmm. It can either be God sets the standard, mm -hmm. the individual sets the standard, or the community sets the standard. Those are the only three possibilities. Divine command theory is a theory which proposes that, that actions, their status as whether it be moral or good, is equivalent to whether it's commanded by God. Followers of both monotheistic and polytheistic religions. Now, monotheistic is one Christianity, one guy, mm -hmm. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Most of all other religions, they have lots of gods. So followers of both in ancient and modern times have often accepted the importance of God's command in establishing morality. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a Christian to, to, be moral. Well, to think that God has some good ideas about morality. Mm -hmm. All right? So that may sound good, and it may sound religious. Bear in mind that it doesn't actually require a right relationship with God. Yeah. Only a recognition that his commands in regards to men's relationship with each other are beneficial. Right. That, they're, right. that they're beneficial. 
Most people who believe that America was founded as a Christian nation lose sight of this truth, okay? Many of the people who were the driving forces of the foundation of America, the American Revolution, mm -hmm. or the American Rebellion, depending on your point of view, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, for example, right? They were f absolute the power behind, I mean, so much of what happened in revolution. They believed, they absolutely believed, and they held scripture in high regard as to its moral teaching. But neither of them accepted the lordship and the atoning work of Jesus Christ in their own lives. See, you, you can look in the Bible and say, whoa, that's good. I, you know, I do seminars on biblical principles in the workplace. And I've done them for secular companies. And I, even though I tell them right from the very, very beginning that everything that I'm going to teach comes out of the Bible. When I start to show them things out of the book of Proverbs in, in a business context, they say, oh, that makes perfect sense. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because it does. So they can accept those and start applying them in their life. Mm -hmm. That doesn't require them to be a Christian. To be a Christian or accept the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus.